about to click go and I realized my uh, I didn't even have my webcam set up oh no but we are here we are back it is Shakespeare and I actually it feels like it's been a lot longer than it has because I full-on forgot which one that I left off on and had to look back and I was like oh yes of course but as I'm looking at it this next one which I shall put up the thing so I don't forget how do I do it again? That thing. Uh, this. Um, where are you? This one? Yes. That one? Yes. Boom. And la la la. So we ended on... Can you see my mouse? I can't tell. Ah, so we ended on... It is 50, right? Yes. L. And it starts... The next one starts with thus. Which... Again, I am still rusty with my Shakespeare and that sort of thing. So I could be incorrect, but usually thus is is connected to something beforehand. I just missed it. Yes, okay. But... Ugh. But I don't know. So we will read through this one, and if it seems like we need to go back and read the other one to go with it, that... We will just do that. Uh, but otherwise, we are on number 51. So we shall start. Shakespeare's Sonnets number 51. Thus can my love excuse the slow offense of my dull bearer, when from thee I speed, from where thou art, why should I haste me thence? Till I return, of posting is no need. Oh, what excuse will my poor beast then find, when swift extremity can seem but slow? Then should I spur, though mounted on the wind, in winged speed no motion shall I know. Then can no horse with my desire keep pace, therefore desire, of perfect love being made, shall nay, no dull flesh, in his fiery race. But love, for love, thus shall excuse my jade, since from thee going he went willful slow, towards thee I'll run and give him leave to go. So it does have something to do with the uh, other one, the first one, because it was talking about the beast that he rides uh, plodding dully on um, and at the end y yeah I I had an analysis of it being um, okay I, I do have to read through it quick again so how heavy do I journey on the so this is number 50 how heavy do I journey on the way when what I seek my weary travels end doth teach that ease and that repose to say thus far the miles are measured from thy friend the beast that bears me so 
I was analyzing it as being that being life, tired with my woe, plods dully on to bear that weight in me, as if by some instinct the wretch did know, his rider loved not speed, being made from thee. Ah, yes, yes. The bloody spur cannot provoke him on, that sometimes anger thrusts into his hide, which heavily he answers with a groan, more sharp to me than spurring to his side. So that same groan doth put this in my mind. My, gr my grief lies onward and my joy behind. And we'll continue. Thus can my love excuse the slow offense of my dull bearer, when from thee I speed. <sighs> so again, if we go back to what I was uh, thinking in number 50, where it was... Um, it seemed as if the friend or whoever was at the end was dead and potentially by some of the wording by suicide, which is why in, uh, thus the beast that bears me tired with my woe as if I, okay, Pl plods de Leon as if by some instinct the wretch did know his rider loved not speed being made from thee. His rider loved not speed being made from thee. Because... Ye, the um, speaker, I guess, wants to be with whoever is at the end of that life, but if that person committed suicide, you would get to that point faster if you did the same thing, but you don't want to do that, if that makes sense. So, again, I could be absolutely wrong with this. Thus can my love excuse the slow offense of my dull bearer, when from thee I speed. So instead of going to so my love excuse the slow offense of my dull bearer so whatever is the beast being ridden so life um, when from thee I speed from where thou art why should I haste me thence see that's what I'm thinking because from where you are why should I hasten, hasten me there despite the fact that that is where you are till I return of posting is no need of posting is no need because you're dead Oh, what excuse will my poor beast then find when swift extremity can seem but slow? Oh, what excuse will my... Yeah, so when, if you do it too swiftly, even like doing it swiftly in an extreme fashion, and I could, I could be like on this like little rut and it like finding how it works even though maybe it's not but I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going with it I'm gonna stick to it for a little bit when swift extremity can seem but slow yeah then should I spur though mounted on the wind in winged speed no motion shall I know which then goes to then can no horse with my desire keep pace so hang on so then should I spur though mounted on the wind so I'm trying to spur my beast, even though I'm only mounted on the wind. So I'm mounted on the wind and spurring the wind. Allegorically. Then can no horse with my desire keep pace. So my desire is faster than any horse. Therefore desire of perfect love being made. Desire is made of perfect love. Shall nay, no dull flesh. It is not a nay of uh, no material thing flesh in his fiery race very fast but love for love thus shall excuse my jade like being jaded since from thee going so from thee going he went willful slow towards thee I'll run and give him leave to go okay hang on so the beast that is oh, oh, oh okay so we're back on desire so from thee, my desire went willful slow because it didn't want to leave. So towards thee, I will run and give him leave to go. That I'm unsure. Sure. So we're going to check the trusty dusty book. And then at the end, it did. It seemed like it went um, away from my initial analysis. So we shall see. We shall check trusty dusty book. Since we have our potential thoughts in there, now we can see if they mesh and how we would like to do that. Okay, sense of slowness, even blah, 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 blah. Jade, the weary horse. Thus shall excuse my jade, okay. Willful, willfully go walk, I'll race back without him. Okay, because here's what I'm having issues with, is because 
Okay, thus can my love excuse the slow offense of my dull bear when from... The, okay, so thus can my love excuse the slow offense of my... Okay, when from the I speed. So it's talking about leaving right at this moment. So thus can my love excuse the slow offense of my dull bearer when from the I speed. From where thou art, why should I haste me thence? I don't want to leave you. Till I return of posting is no need. Oh, what excuse will my poor beast then find? Of posting, unless that's like the, the gate of the horse. Till I return of posting is no need because it'll be too slow perhaps. Oh, what excuse will my poor beast then find? When swift extremity can seem but slow. Then should I spur, though mounted on the wind, and wing speed, no motion shall I know. Then can no horse with my desire keep pace. And again, going back to that, like how thought goes faster than the material. Therefore desire of perfect love being made shall nay no dull flesh in his fiery race. But love for the love thus shall excuse my jade, still walking away, since from thee going he went willful slow. Towards thee I'll run and give him leave to go. That's what it's kind of... Thought I heard a sound. Um, that's why it's weird, because it's talking about... Uh, it's talking about leaving, and I kind of feel bad for the horse. Because he's talking about how, how he's going slow away from him, because he knows that he doesn't want to leave. Oh. Oh. So 50 might be just about leaving, too, and wanting my travel's end being to come to return to you. Doth, doth teach that ease and that repose to say, thus far the miles of my... Yep, the beast that bears me tired with my woe. Okay, yeah, to bear that weight in me. As if by some instinct the wretch did know his rider love not speed. Oh, okay, being made from thee, which is love, which is speed. Interesting. The bloody spur cannot provoke him on, that sometimes anger thrusts into his hide which heavily he answers with a groan, more sharp to me than spurring to his side. Same groan, doth put this in my mind, my grief left. Oh, okay, that could make sense. That actually does make a lot more sense. So yeah, it's just about having to leave. And the next one, love excuse the slow offense, dull bear, from the I speed, speed, <laughs> from where thou art, why should I haste me thence? Because it's leaving you till I return. Yeah, that makes sense. What excuse when swift extremity can seem but slow. Oh, what excuse will my poor beast then find when swift extremity can seem but slow? See, like, I, I'm just kind of not getting how that quite connects, but that's okay. Then should I spur the mounted on the wind? Wing speed, no motion shall I know. And again, just sending... But yeah, so that's what I was going to say. It's like I feel kind of bad for the horse because the horse is like, well, you don't want to go, so why should I go fast? And then in the end, when actually returning unless it's not actually returning <laughs> so if it were to be actually returning um he's leaving the horse but i don't think so. i, th I want to say it's allegorical so the love is sending onward rather than so i send my love back to you even though my actual bearer is continuing on with me i think that seems that seems probably a lot more probable. So yes, there. Oops, shoot. That sounds that that sounds about good. Not wanting to leave, um, and sending love and thoughts uh, back. Sure. Fifty three. What is your substance? Whereof are you made? That millions of strange shadows on you tend, since every one hath every one one shade, and you but one can every shadow lend. Describe Adonis. Adonis, Adonis, and the counterfeit is poorly imitated after you. On Helen's cheek, all art of beauty set, and you in Grecian tires are painted new. Speak of the spring. Oh, sorry. Speak of the spring and poison of the year. The one doth shadow of your beauty show. The other, as your bounty does appear, and you in every blessed shape we know. In all external grace, you have some part, but you like none, none you for constant heart. I am also rusty on my Greek stuff. I I used to not be, kind of. Uh, but, yes. Yeah, so, I can't quite remember. I remember Adonai is the thing, but Adonis. We're just going to go with Adonis. Helen, Helen of Troy, Grecian tires on the chariots, painted new. Spring and poison. I must know what poison is. That's a fun word. But How about let's define that. 
a rich harvest. Cheesley in Scotland. Physical energy or strength. Okay, so speak of the spring and poison of the year. Perfect. So, what is your substance? Whereof are you made? What are you made of? Where were you made that millions of strange shadows on you tend? Okay, and, uh, so we're, we're going to continue just a little bit. Since everyone hath, every one, one shade. Okay, so why do you create so many shadows? We'll put a pin in that. Since everyone has, every one, one shadow, one shade, and you, but one, can every shadow lend. So you, except for one, can lend every shadow. Everyone has one, but you can lend all but one. Describe Adonis and the counterfeit is poorly imitated after you. And that was the, um, perf is it male perfection? Adonis. Youth of remarkable beauty, favorite of goddess Aphrodite. Okay. So yes, male beauty and the counterfeit is poorly imitated after you. So any, any counterfeit, whatever is imitated after you is poorly done is a counterfeit of your beauty. On Helen's cheek, all art of beauty is set. She's very beautiful. And you in Grecian tires are painted new. And is that something where I'm going back to Disney Hercules as in like they paint stuff on the tires of people that were beautiful? Per potentially, and you and Grecian tires are painted new. Sure, we're gonna go with that. Speak of the uh, spring and poison of the year, the beautiful, the bountiful, the harvest. The one doth shadow, the one does shadow of your beauty show. So the spring shows only a shadow of your beauty. The other, as your bounty, does appear. So the poison, the harvest, is as your bounty, as much as you offer. And you in every blessed shape we know, you are uh, every, everything blessed, everything good, everything wonderful you are in. In all external grace, you have some part, but you like none. So in everything external, everything graceful, grace, um, external, you are a part of, but you like none, none you for constant heart. So you are unlike any other because your heart is constant. So I think... I understand the first part, the shadow, that millions of strange shadows on you tend because everything else is a shadow compared to you, a shadow of your beauty, your goodness. Since everyone hath, everyone has one shadow, you have you but you but one, which is you. Not sure. Can every shadow lend? I think. And I like that ending. And all so yeah, so speaking of the spring and the the harvest, bounteous. You're in every blessed shape, in all external graces you have part, but you are unlike any other. None are like you, because your heart is constant. I love that. That was a, that was a nice, lovely one, I think. I hope. <laughs> we're we're going to keep it there, because we want, we want a nice, good one, a little, a lovely one. Awesome. So, 54. Oh, how much more doth beauty beauty is seen by that sweet ornament which truth doth give. The rose looks fair, but fairer we it deem, for that sweet odor which doth in it live. The canker blooms have full as deep a dye, as the perfumed tincture of the roses. Hang on such thorns, and play as wantonly when summer's breath their masked buds discloses. But for their, for their virtue only is their show. They live unwooed, and unrespected fade, die to themselves. Sweet roses do not sow. Of their sweet deaths are sweetest odors made. And so of you, beauteous and lovely youth, when that shall fade, my verse distills your truth. Okay, so this is another lovely one, I think. Oh, how much more doth beauty, beauty is seen by that sweet, sweet ornament with truth, ah, by that sweet ornament which truth doth give. So beauty is that much more beauteous when it is ornamented sweetly with truth. The rose looks fair, but fairer we it deem for that sweet odor which doth in it live. So comparing um, the beauty and beauteousness beauteousness, the fairness of a rose to so spe so specifying the generalization of the first verse lines. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, of the first lines. So the first lines are a generalization. 
specifying it with the rose, which looks fair, we deem it fairer for the sweet odor that it gives, which would be um, the sweetness of truth. Uh, the canker blooms, whatever those may be, have full as deep a dye. They're full and deeply colored um, as the perfumed tincture of the roses. Okay, I kind of need to kind of need to potentially see what that is just in case. But yeah, so basically, again, bringing on the floral, beautiful sweetness, um, canker bloom. Bloom or blossom of the wild ro Oh, so the bloom. So the canker blooms have full as deep a dye as the perfumed. Okay, hang on, hang on. Oh, 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 okay. So the ro the canker blooms are the rose bud. So they're as deeply colored as the roses which are perfumed, the perfume tincture of the roses, they hang on the same thorns and they play as wantonly when summer, they wave as much when summer's breath, when summer's breath their massed buds discloses and play as wantonly when summer, summer's breath, their massed buds. So once summer breathes into them and unmasks their disclosed buds, but those when they are closed and you're unable to smell them, their virtue only is in how they look. So they are unwooed and unrespected, fade and die to themselves. But the sweet, the scented roses do not so. Of their sweet deaths, so when they die, the sweetest odors are made, made into the perfumes. And so of you, my love, beauteous and lovely youth, when all of that fades, my verse shall be that perfume that distills your truth, your sweetness. Yes. That one was okay. That one went, that one went all right. And again, it is. It's one of those things where going over all of these and having them in context, the patterns are in there, and it's a lot easier once you get started on them to understand the rest of them. So fifty-five. Not mar. Oh, and I'm gonna have to go to the next page, aren't I? Ah, okay. Not marble nor the gilded monuments of princes shall outlive this powerful rhyme, but you shall shine more bright in these con in these contents than unswept stone besmeared with sluttish time when wasteful war shall statues overturn and broils root out the work of masonry nor mars his sword nor war's quick fire shall burn the living record of your memory against death and all oblivious enmity shall you pace forth your praise shall still find room even in the eyes of all posterity that wear this world out to the ending doom so till the judgment that yourself arise you live in this and dwell in lovers' eyes. Okay. I already know there's a word that I'm going to have to go over. <laughs> so, um, so again, we see where sluttish, where that actually comes from. Um, out of the um, modern, uh, not interpretation of it, but modern use of it, Basically, oh, well, dated version is having low standards of cleanliness. So then you do, you look at, it's not, it doesn't come specifically from the modern day interpretation. It started as a certain, a certain definition that came to describe a certain person or behavior of a person, if that makes sense. So... Um, having low standards, standards of cleanliness, Th then unswept stone, besmeared with sluttish time. Yeah, perfect. That's absolutely what it is. So, not marble, nor the gilded monuments of princes shall outlive this powerful rhyme. So, any physical architectural things shall fall or be destroyed before this powerful rhyme here. But you, my love, shall shine more bright in these contents. You will shine brightly in, in, within this rhyme, more bright in these contents than unswept stone besmeared with sluttish time. So, kind of knocking on <laughs> architecture here, because because um, mentions marble and gilded monuments, and then puts it in the same category as unswept stone, uh, besmeared, marked with uncleanly time, time making it uncleanly or time being uncleanly which I don't think is even a word, but it is now. So you shall shine more bright in these contents. 
because um, you don't have to dust verses unless you count the books. When wasteful war shall statues overturn, so wasteful war overturns statues, okay, yep, and broils root out the work of masonry, tearing down things, uh, nor mars his sword. Um, is Mars a god of war? But didn't, is, it, is Mars Roman or Greek? Oh gosh, it has been a while. Not Mars good. Roman. Mars is the god of war. Mars, so god of war again. So war, the sword of war, war's quick fire shall burn, um, the living record of your memory. Is this going into kids again? <laughs> I, I, I think it's I think it's the verse even though people do burn books against death and all oblivious enmity and all oblivious enmity so against death and all all oblivious enmity so all oblivious being on not taking consideration kind of shall you pace forth against death and enmity shall you pace forth your praise shall still find room, uh, even in the eyes of all posterity, uh, ever after, that wear this world out to the ending doom. So anything else that ends anything else wears the world out to doom. So till the judgment, ooh, so till the judgment that yourself arise, so until judgment day, basically, when you do arise again, you still live in this verse and dwell, you live on in lovers eyes which is not just the writer but anyone who reads and is a lover and understands um, the verses therein and can see themselves in these same verses potentially I think so that seems pretty good I like it <laughs> so 56 sweet love renew thy force be it not said thy edge shall blunter be than appetite which but today by feeding is allayed Tomorrow sharpened in his former might. So love be thou, although today thou fill thy hungry eyes, even till thy wink, they wink with fullness. Tomorrow see again, and do not kill the spirit of love with a perpetual dullness. Let this sad interim, like the ocean be, which parts the shore, where two contracted new come, where two contracted new come daily to the banks, that when they see return of love, more blessed may be the view, or call it winter, which being full of care makes summer's welcome thrice more wished, more rare. Hungry eyes. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. Sweet love, renew thy force. Be it not said, thy edge shall blunter be than appetite, which but today, by feeding is allayed, tomorrow sharpened in his former might. Sweet love, renew thy force. So, okay. So the feeling of love and the uh, emotion and purpose behind love. Not just the internal feeling, but the uh, intent behind it, potentially. Renew thy force. Be it not said that the edge of love shall blunter be than appetite, which by feeding your appetite today is allayed, is, um, is fixed and is the sharpness the pangs of hunger are blunted and set aside until tomorrow which are then sharpened to the former might so it's it uh it it waffles back and forth by feeding by feeding the appetite the appetite goes away and comes back but love should not be so Tom uh so love be thou Although today thou fill thy hungry eyes, although you get your fill today, even till they wink and fall asleep, you pass out with fullness. Tomorrow see again and do not kill the spirit of love with perpetual dullness. So even if you get your fill, do not make that be all that's needed. If that makes sense, I'm sorry. So basically do not let getting that desire, seeing the person, being with the person, um, any of that lessen love in any way so that you can then leave again and be fine and then you have to come back again because hungry, in love. Um, 
which is not the spirit of love. So let this sad interim, the space between us, like the ocean be, which parts the shore, where two contracted new come daily to the banks. This is a little weird for me, where two contracted new come daily to the banks. So two people, two contracted new, come daily to the banks, that when they see, oh, return of love, more blessed may be the view. Or call it winter. <laughs> so I'm almost thinking, let the sad interim be like the ocean, which parts from the shore, which is very sad, where two contracted new come daily to the banks, and they're in love, potentially, that when they see, either the two contracted new, see the return of love, the ocean, to the shore, the more blessed may be that view, or the ocean, <laughs> returning to the bank, sees the lovers, and more blessed may be that view. I almost think it's the other one. Parts the shore where two contracted new come daily to the banks, that when they see return of love, <gasps> more blessed may be the view, potentially. Or call it winter, which being full of care, makes summer's welcome thrice more wished, more rare. So, in winter, is a lot there's a lot more at stake there there's a lot more so in like the the ocean leaving and coming back it's more of a like a, oh it's sad and then oh there it is again but winter it's a it's a big loss um so then and it's hard it's full of hardships so then it makes summer's welcome once summer comes again thrice three times more wished for and rarer because it's not just the ocean leaving, coming back, leaving, coming back. So yes, basically don't, don't let um, getting what you want, if, and I guess that could just generally be a thing where if you get what you want out of love and are able to, out of love, and are able to then leave and then wait for it and, oh, well, I want it again, comes back, then that's not love or it's not what it should be if that all makes sense if that actually came to <laughs> some um uh, coherent conclusion kind of hopefully it makes sense in my mind kind of so number 57 being your slave what should i do but tend upon the hours and times of your desire i have no precious time at all to spend nor services to do till you require nor dare I chide the world without end hour, whilst I, my sovereign, watch the clock for you, nor think the bitterness of absence sour when you have bid your servant once adieu, nor dare I question with my jealous thought where you may be or your affairs repose, but, like a sad slave, stay and think of naught, save where you are, how happy you make those. So true a fool is love that in your will, though you do anything, he thinks no ill. Ah, so... Being your slave, um, in a sense, what else should I do but tend upon uh, the hours and times of your desire? Whatever you want, I will be giving to you. I have no precious time at all to spend. My time is not my own. I have nothing to do unless it is what you require, till you require. Nor dare I chide the world without end hour. World without end hour. So... Uh, the endless hour, I guess, whilst I, my sovereign, watch the clock for you. So, I don't dare chide how slow the hours go while I'm watching the clock for you. Nor do I think that the bitterness of absence sour, I don't see it, your absence, as something bitter or sour, and I shouldn't, when you have bid your servant want to do. Um, because it's so you have said goodbye, you have said you're going off somewhere, it's not my place to it's not a slave. I don't know. I wanted to check, but I won't. Um Oh yes, when you have bid your servant want to do. So it's not my place to uh find to see your absence as anything bitter or sour to me. Uh, nor dare I question with my jealous thought, the thought of losing you, nor dare I, err the anticipation or fear of loss, uh, nor dare I question with my jealous thought where you may be. Um, so yeah, so I'm not going to question where you are, what your affairs are, 
But like a sad slave, I will stay and think of nothing but where you are and how happy you make those with whom you are. So true a fool is love. So true, uh, so true, so loyal a fool is love that in your will, though you do anything, anything at all, anything even bad, um, love thinks no ill of it. Which is uh, kind of a, a sad one. Um, and it depends. It depends on whether it... So it does. It seems to be... It could. It could be unrequited. It could just be the view that that, that the author holds of the relationship rather than the other person. Um, it could be malignant on the other person, uh, malignant and or intentional, but we don't get that perspective of it. So it's basically just someone being in love and totally relying on and um, what's the phrase or word? Uh, eh, something to. <laughs> Uh, putting all of their stock in that person, all of their time, their attention, everything is about that person and neglecting themselves. Which apparently some people are okay with. D uh, personally, I think relationships should be mutual, but to each his or her own. Anywho, so yeah, so that's that one. Uh, 58, that God forbid that made me first your slave, I should in thought control your times of pleasure, or at your hand be accounted hours to crave, being your vassal bound to stay your leisure. Oh, let me suffer, being at your beck, the imprisoned absence of your liberty, and patience tamed to sufferance, bide each, che bide each check, without accusing you of injury. Be where you list, your charter is so strong, that you yourself may privilege your time. Do what you will, to you it doth belong, yourself to pardon of self-doing crime. I am to wait, though waiting so be hell, not blame your pre not blame your pleasure, be it ill or well. And again, this is the same kind of a thing. It almost seemed like it was going to a point of um, that, not that it was okay, but like this person was... The author was, yeah, okay with it. They enjoyed doing this. And then it went not that way. So we'll start with that God forbid that made me first your slave. So God, again, being that probably personification, that Cupid, that, um, yeah, that God forbid that made me first your slave. Uh, I should in thought control your times of pleasure. So, so again, going to that God forbid I in my thoughts, try and control your times of pleasure, which would be to spend with me, or at your hand, the account of hours to crave. So begging for more time with you, being your vassal, your servant, bound to stay your leisure, bound to stay or go um, at whenever you please. Let me suffer, uh, being at your beck and call, the imprisoned absence of your liberty imprisoned absence oh let me suffer the imprisoned absence of your liberty so your freedom imprisons me with your absence and patience patience tame to sufferance bide each check without accusing you of injury so being patient and waiting biding the time um and not accusing you of any injury, of any malignant uh, intent. Be where you list. I'm going to check that one, actually. Because I, uh, I almost feel like list might be... Be wherever you... Hang on. This one is 58. Uh, ba -ba -bum. It's probably not going to tell me. Absence, imprisonment for me, uh-huh, freedom, blah, 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 patience, sufferance, let patience, let patience tame the points of submission, endure, be, be. list, wish, be where you list, where you wish, yes, be wherever you want, your charter, 
is so strong. Your charter being your desire, whatever you would wish, your decision making. Charter, entitlement. Okay, your entitlement is so strong, as I am your slave, your servant, that you yourself may privilege your time. You can decide whatever you want to do with it. Do whatever you will. To you, it does belong. You are the only one who can pardon of any crime that you do in making those decisions with regard to me or slave potentially I am to wait though waiting so be hell even though it's hell to wait for you and not blame your pleasure whether it be ill or well and that's the line that hit it for me is that not I'm not blaming your pleasure whether or not it's ill or well so whether or not you're being malignant or not it's not I am just to wait whether or not it's hell and not blame you for it it's all up to you it's all up to you to pardon yourself or not and so that one's another eh, one <laughs> but and it is it's one of those I don't know it's a different sort of um and I and maybe I shouldn't say it's it's different Like, it's one thing to dote on a person, and it's another thing to be, to punish yourself, even indirectly, by, yeah, being at their beck and call, and not having anything for yourself. Oh. I have to make sure I'm not... Oh, okay. That's fine. Sorry, I thought it was m misaligned, and I might have covered up some of the words, but I have not, so I'll make sure my mic is working. <laughs> Just in case. Yes, it's working fine. Alright, perfect. Alright, so 59. If there be nothing new but that which is hath been before, how are, how are our brains beguiled, which laboring for invention bear amiss the second burthen of a former child? Oh, that record could with a backward look, even of five hundred courses of the sun. Show me your image in some antique book since mind at first in character was done, that I might see what the old world could say to this composed wonder of your frame, whether we are mended, or where, or where better they, or whether revolution be the same. Oh, sure I am, the wits of former days, to subjects worse have given admiring praise. Okay, so we're a little different here, if, I think, if there be, if there's nothing new, but that which is, or has been before, nothing is, absolutely everything has been done before, and has been before, how are our how are our brains pulled, which lit, which working towards something new, bear amiss the second burden of a former child. Bear amiss. How are our brains pulled, beguiled, which laboring, which laboring for invention bear amiss the second burden of a former child. I'm gonna come back to that. Oh, that record could with a backward look, even if 500 courses of the sun. Uh, so there's records that you could look backward with and see, even of 500, over 500 years. <laughs> um, I, th I would think it would mean, yeah. Show me your image. Show me your image in some antique book since mind at first in character was... Ooh, okay, so show me you, your image, in some antique book since mind at first in character was done. So the mind was first... Yeah, so... <laughs> anything... <sighs> the mind... At... Okay. <laughs> Mind at first. Whatever was al was already written came from a mind and was created into some form of character. It has already been done. Despite the adjustments that could be ma minor adjustments, a uh, new coat of paint, as you were, or as it were, um, it's already been done before. That I might see what the old world could say to this composed wonder of your frame. So comparing other, um, other, 
depictions of beauty and or love, which has been the theme, to this compose, this verse, um, this poem, this composed wonder of your frame. Whether we are mended, well, whether we fixed it, or whether we've been are better than they were, or wh whether revolution be the same, oh, sure I am, the wits of former days to subjects worse. <laughs> oh, so I am sure that the wits of former days, the uh, intellectuals, the writers um, of days past to worse subjects than you, my love, uh, have given praise and admired worse subjects before. So, if there be nothing new but that which is hath been before, how are our brains beguiled, which are laboring for invention, bear amiss the second burden of a former child. So, this would be which laboring for invention, trying to say something new about this subject, but they miss, bear, bear amiss, that they're just basically creating another work. They're laboring under this burden of trying to make this create this that is worthy of this subject even though there's been stuff that has been written before that would potentially be at least in the league of being worthy of that subject so yes oh that record because of the backward look by like antique um you can find your image in some character character um doesn't need to be fictional um, yeah, since mind at first in character was done, that I might see what the old world could say to this composed wonder of your frame. Yeah, whether we're mended or whether better than they, whether it's exactly the same as what, like this new thing that I'm trying, it's actually just exactly the same. And yeah, so then I'm sure that people before have given admiring praise to subjects worse than you, but I could still compare at least my verse to that and see if I'm going a little out on a limb here compare and get inspiration or in general just see that distinction or non-distinction that it again it's been done before which <laughs> that's the thing uh, with it is. It is hard to make things that are absolutely new. Everything has been done before in some way, shape, or form. But what it is, is it's taking, in order to be at, in any way original, there has to be a going against the grain. And you know what? Mm, that's <laughs> potentially thoughts for another... Well, yeah, we're just going to go for it. So, uh, entertainment. I have. I've been. I haven't watched movies in a long time because what I continuously see in trailers is that it's basically a remake, a sequel, or um, just fully or an, a different adaptation of something that has already been done, and not in a way that is meant to. Do it justice, if that makes sense. Um, corners are cut, and it's just a matter of... It is, it's a cash grab, which is what it... Yeah, that's what it is. It's, And you can tell that if you really look at it and are honest <laughs> with yourself, which I had to become. I used to love movies a lot, and I watched them all the time, and I eventually let myself get beyond that and actually be a little bit more critical of it, and in recognizing that, it it kind of sucked so and going and going with that but that and going beyond that then i guess is pinning that okay so <laughs> i have lots of thoughts about this um so in order to be new at all it's a matter of again putting your own spin on it taking pieces and putting it together in a new way that's what it there's nothing new that can be done except to put the is to put the pieces together in a different way 
So take the pieces and put... <laughs> I'm saying it over and over, but that's basically what it is. Everything's been done. All of the pieces are available. All those pieces. And what people keep on doing is they keep taking the same chunk of pieces and putting them together basically exactly the same way. And in not as good of a way as has been done before, if that makes sense. So instead of doing that, just taking it and redoing it and cash grabbing it as it is. Hello! I'm on an entertainment rant, <laughs> so I apologize. Um, so basically this poem was talking about how everything has basically been done before. And good evening. I'm sorry if I didn't say that already. So yeah, so we were on um, 59, this one right here. I don't know if you can see my mouse or not. And it was basically talking about how everything has already been done before, um, include like basing it on these verses. And I w yeah, I was on an entertainment rant of how movies nowadays specifically are basically sequels and remakes and just adaptations um, that are basically cash grabs rather than anything doing the original material justice, if that makes sense. And so where I was going with that is that, yes, everything has already been done before. You can go back how far in time and find these things in entertainment, in literature, in whatever it is. And the pieces are, are all there. They've already been done. And taking those pieces, different pieces, and putting to get them together in a new way is where invention comes from, at least nowadays, or it should be, but yeah, so then but basically what people are doing is taking all the pieces that have already been put into a puzzle and putting that in again and in not as great of a way as it was. And, and, then, and then I was going to move into another thing. <laughs> you came in at just the right time. <laughs> I'll, I'll get back to the reading in a bit, I'm sorry. Um, but then, if, in order to, well, yeah, so in order to actually do anything that appears new nowadays, even though it's already been done before, you have to be able to go against the grain and not follow, again, what is already being done, not following those trends and buying into whatever is pushed and trending at the time, if that makes sense. So, sorry, I had to come into the rant. <laughs> but that was that one. How the rest of your flight go? I hope it went well. So, yeah, so there. R rant over. And we, we, we can get back to reading. I do. I was, in my defense, potentially, I was. I was, and still am in some degree, very into the entertainment industry. I love movies, music, TV, all of that stuff, but it it disenchanted me um, because of it. Yeah, it the story, the writing started being um, less than uh, what's the word? It wasn't about the story anymore. Um, and that's what it's supposed to be as Somebody who is into that sort of stuff, that's what entertainment is supposed to be. It's supposed to be about the story and the entertainment first. But, yes. Anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll, 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 I'll move on. Except, okay. It went good except while I was chatting. I forgot it was climbing. Oh, no. It was 900 feet above my intended altitude. Oh. Oops. Well, I, I hope it didn't, like, he didn't go into a mountain or anything. I, I guess so it took longer than oh okay okay good well I apologize for that <laughs> but I'm glad I'm glad that it went well otherwise so great cool all right well I can go ahead and do the next one um, and it'll be more of an analysis and I assume less ranty so well hopefully this one yes this one looks more fun I think so number 60 so, like as the waves make towards the pebbled shore, so do our minutes hasten to their end, each changing place with that which goes before. In sequent toil, all forwards do contend. Nati nativity once in the main of light crawls to maturity, wherewith being crowned, crooked eclipses gainst his glory fight. 
And time that gave doth now his gift confound. Time doth transfix the flourish set on youth, and delves the parallels in beauty's brow, feeds on the rarities of nature's truth, and nothing stands but for his scythe to mow, and yet to times in hope my verse shall stand, praising thy worth despite his cruel hand. So yes, this is going to be, and um, you throw out whatever thoughts you have. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. I'm, a little, I'm still a little rusty on my Shakespeare, but I'm working through it. So, uh, like as the waves make towards the pebbled shore, waves going towards the shore, so do our minutes hasten to their end. Um, our time on earth hastens toward death, each changing place with that which goes before. Every person changing, so do our minutes hasten to their end, each changing place with that which goes before, each minute changing place with what has gone before. In sequent toil, all forwards do contend, in sequential work and toiling onward through life um, is always moving forward. Nativity, once in the main of light, newness, crawls to maturity, uh, and wherewith being crowned, maturity, is, so from nativity to maturity is then crowned, crooked eclipses against his glory fight, wherewith being crowned, crooked, oh, so crooked as in bent, eclipses against his glory fight, so bent, old age, and time that gave, so time has given, doth now his gift confound. So at that point, time was given as a gift and now uh, removes it. Time doth transfix the flourish set on youth and delves the parallels in beauty's brow, creates the wrinkles in the face, beauty's brow, feeds on the rarities of nature's truth, and time feeds on the rarities of nature's truth, Nothing stands but for his scythe to mow, so the reaper, <laughs> and nothing stands before it. And yet to times in hope, my verse, though, again, shall stand, praising your worth despite his cruel hand. So you shall again, my love, live on in my verse, despite how life itself goes on and ends, I think. <laughs> That's been a little bit of the theme. So it seems like there were some specific points that might have been a little bit wonky, but I think that's the gist of it. So, yeah. So that was 60. And we can go to 61. Whoopsie daisy. Oh, no. Alright. Alright. Ooh. Okay, so, 61. Is it thy will, thy image should keep open my heavy eyelids to the weary night? Dost thou desire my slumbers should be broken, while shadows like to thee do mock my sight? Is it thy spirit that thou sendest, sensed from thee, so far from home, into my deeds to pry? I, two, to find out shames and idle hours in me, the scope and tenor of thy jealousy. O oh, no, thy love, thou, though much, is not so great. It is my love that keeps mine eyes awake, mine own true love that doth my rest defeat, to play the watchman ever for thy sake. For thee watch I, whilst thou dost wake elsewhere, for, whilst thou dost wake elsewhere, from me far off, with others all too near. So this is another one. He's uh, written similar ones before, where I cannot sleep because my love. Is it thy will, so my love, that your image should keep, should keep my eyelids, though I am weary and tired, my heavy eyelids, I, they're still open and they keep me awake. Your image keeps me awake. Is it your will that that happens? Do you desire that my sleep should be broken while shadows that I see with my open eyes look like you and mock me? Is it your spirit that you send so far from home, from you, so far from you to me to pry into my existence to find out the shames and the idle hours in me and scope the tenor of your jealousy your love no is not so much it's not so great as to do that it is my own love that keeps my eyes awake my own true love that my rep that defeats my ability to sleep and plays the watchman ever for your sake 
For you I watch while you wake elsewhere, from far from me and uh, with others too near to you. And that can be a little bit of a jealousy thing on the author's part. So yeah, that one seemed pretty good. That one came together pretty good. And I did. I liked the um, little bit at the end that was um, from me far off with others all too near. Well, and it could just be a general if that others being so near to you, I am jealous of those people. <laughs> not, not necessarily other lovers, but just in general, your um, being and presence that they get to enjoy it and I don't. That one, that one, that one worked out pretty well. <laughs> yeah, there, there's some, there's some that are a little bit tricky, and then others that are pretty straightforward. At least, especially from reading all of the other ones, they inform the ones beyond. So that helps. So that was 50, 61. And on to 62. All right. So, sin of self-love possesseth... Pos I apologize. Possesseth. Sin of self-love possesseth all mine eye, and all my soul, and all my every part. And for this sin there is no remedy. It is so grounded inward in my heart. Methinks no face so gracious is as mine, no shape so true, no truth of such account. And for myself mine own worth do define, as I all other in all worth surmount. But when my glass shows me myself indeed, baited and chopped with tanned antiquity, mine own self-love quite contrary I read, self so self-loving were iniquity. Tis thee, myself, that for myself I praise, painting my age with beauty of thy days. It started to get a little funny at the end, and I kind of am sad that I didn't realize that. I kind of wanted to put a funny voice on. So... So, first line, lots of ethids. A sin of self-love possesseth all mine eye. So, I am very into myself, and all my soul, and all of my every part, and for this sin, there is no remedy. There's nothing that can be done about it. It's so grounded in my heart. It's in my heart. It, there, you can't do anything about that. Methinks no face so gracious is as mine. <laughs> okay, so this one, this one is funny. No face is so gracious as mine. This is a narcissism poem. No face is so good as mine. No shape is so true. No truth of such account. For myself, mine own worth do define. I define my own worth by myself. As I, all other, in all worth surmount. I, I surmount everyone else in worth. But when my glass shows me myself indeed, when I look into my mirror and show me, baited and chopped with tanned antiquity, I am old. And, yeah, kind of, it shows on my face. Mine own self-love, my self-love is contrary to what I read, to what I see there. Self so self-loving were iniquity. Tis thee, myself, that for myself I praise. It is, and now we're talking to ourselves. Tis thee, myself, that for myself I praise. Painting, oh, wait, hang on. Oh, oh, hang on. Now it now it got cute. <laughs> so, tis thee, myself, that for myself I praise. I praise myself, painting my age with the beauty of my days. So, though I am old and do not look as beauteous as I looked myself, or as I see myself, what I have done in my past, I have lived a full, beautiful life. And that beautifies my now, more aged face. Oh, okay, hang on. Now I have to go back. Sin of self-love possesseth all mine eye. So I am. I love myself, all of my soul, all of my part. There's no remedy for it. It's grounded in my heart. No face is as gracious as mine. No shape so true. Everything. I am not, well, yeah, better than everyone else. All, every, I'm worth, my worth is greater than all others. None surmount mine. But yet, why? Why do I have this feeling? Because I look in the mirror and all I see is age. But it's because I've lived a life. I've lived a beautiful, wonderful life. 
Oh, that took a turn. That was a roller coaster. So yeah, it went from very kind of funny and narcissistic to really, really, really beautiful. I liked that one. That was lovely. And it has. That's the first... That's the first one of all of these. The 62, so 61 before this, has all been about somebody else. So, yeah. It's not. It doesn't... It's not narcissistic. It's loving your life and what you've done with it. Oh. That was lovely. Okay. That was nice. That was... I like that one. So. 63. Against my love shall be as I am now, with time's injurious hand crusted and and o'erworn, when hours have drained his blood and filled his brow with lines and wrinkles, when his youthful morn hath travelled on to age's sleepy night, and all those beauties whereof now he's king are vanishing or vanished out of sight, stealing away the treasure of his spring, for such a time do I now fortify against confounding age's cruel knife, that he shall never cut from memory my sweet love's beauty, though my lover's life. His beauty shall in these black lines be seen, and they shall live, and he in them still green. Against my love shall be as I am now, with time's injurious hand. Against my love shall be as I am now, with time's injurious hand crusted and or worn. So similar to past ones where uh, being older than the author being older than the reader and admiring the youth and beauty there. So against, against my love shall be, so my love shall be crushed. I wonder if that is supposed to be crushed. Oh, it is crushed, not crust. Looks like crust. Uh, crushed and or worn by time, just as I am now. So I am older than my love. When hours have drained his blood, when the hours have drained his blood, my love, and filled his brow with lines and wrinkles, when his youthful morning has traveled on to the steepy night of age. All the beauties, whereof he's now king of all the beauty, they're vanishing and then vanished out of sight, stealing away the the treasure of his spring, his youth. For such a time do I now... Okay, so for that time when all of his youth, um, my my love's youth has been uh, crushed and or worn away, uh, I fortify against... Confounding age's cruel knife, that he shall never cut from memory my sweet my sweet love's beauty. So time or age, sorry, age's cruel knife will never cut from memory the beauty of my sweet love. Though my lover's life, his beauty shall in these black lines, th- these verses, shall be seen, and these lines shall live, and he in them shall still be young and beautiful. Yeah. And that's basically that. So I will fortify my love's beauty within these verses. Yeah. And there, and in that way, my love shall live. Ha ha. There. That was 68. And now we're on to 69. Ha ha number. When I have seen by time's fell hand defaced the rich proud cost of outworn buried age, when sometime lofty towers I see down raised, and brass eternal slave to mortal rage, when I have seen the hungry ocean gain advantage on the kingdom of the shore, and the firm soil win of the watery, watery main, increasing store with loss and loss with store, when I have seen such interchange of state, or state itself confounded to decay, ruin hath taught me thus to ruminate. That time will come and take my love away. This thought is as is as a death which cannot choose, but weep to have that which it fears to lose. Okay, haha number. When I have seen by time's fell hand deface. So again, this one seems again once my uh, uh, love has been taken away uh, by time and age. When I have seen by time's fell hand, deadly hand, defaced the rich proud cost of outworn buried age oh that's an interesting little snippet time's fell hand defaced the rich proud cost of outworn buried age worn outside 
buried age age outworn um that's a oh I, I i thought that was interesting and buried being close to death i would assume at least that's where it's meant to mentally take the reader i would assume when sometimes lofty towers architectural things i see down raised brought down by time and brass eternal slave to mortal rage brass itself um is still a slave eternally to it doesn't last so it is mortal and and rage it's poetic when i have seen the hungry ocean gain advantage on the kingdom of the shore and the firm soil ooh, and the firm soil win of the watery main so increasing store with loss and loss with store so the going back and forth time passing or state itself confounded to decay state being like political state or just in general state itself confounded to decay ruin all these things have taught me all these uh, examples of ruin have taught me to thus to ruminate to consider that time will come and will take my love away this thought this thought itself is as a death which cannot choose but weep to have that which it fears to lose so, which cannot choose but weep to have that which it fears to lose. So, it, it cannot do anything but it can't choose not to weep in having exactly what it fears to lose. So, even though it has it right now, it fears to lose it because it has it. So, yeah. So, that worry that... Um, anticipation, that anxiety of potential and eventual loss. Yes. Exemplified by all of these other um, depictions of times um, times uh, effect deleterious effect on other things yeah and eventually my love which is sad and makes me weep so yes that was haha -ha number so 70 since brass nor stone nor earth nor boundless sea but sad mortality or sways their power how with this rage shall beauty hold a plea whose action is no stronger than a flower oh how shall summer's honey breath hold out against the wreckful siege of battering days, when rocks impregnable are not so stout, nor gates of steel so strong, but time decays. O fearful meditation, where, slack, shall time's best jewel from time's chest lie hid? Or what strong hand can hold his swift foot back? Or who his spoil of beauty can forbid? O none, unless this miracle have might, that in black ink my love may still shine bright. So again, kind of similar. And... And that's what's going a little bit back to the rant, is that a lot of these have exactly the same, boiling it down, they have the exact same theme, the exact same skeleton of, look at all these examples, well, this one specifically, um, look at all these examples of things that do not stand up to time, and eventually my love will also go the same way, except I can try to write my love within these verses and hopefully that will cause my love to live or keep my love alive. And yet they're all so differently done and decorated, like the skeleton of it is all decorated, all different, just like you take people. Everybody's blood and bone inside and yet in in looks and in mentality everybody's different so just as these that's it is they're all new and yet they all have very similar themes different chunks have similar themes so anyway going on so since brass nor stone none of these things nor stone no earth nor boundless sea but sad mortality or sways their power everything falls to mortality how with this rage shall beauty hold a plea so how against the rage of mortality shall beauty have any um 
chance of remaining. Whose action, when the action of beauty is no stronger than just a flower, there's no other action outside of beauty. Of beauty outside of that. Um, so even though these br the brass, the stone, the earth, the boundless sea, all of those things, they do not have the power to resist mortality. So how could not the weakness, but the inactiveness of beauty, how does that have a chance? How shall summer's sweet breath hold out against the wreckful siege of battering days, which is a great line, when rocks themselves impregnable are not so stout to hold out against that, nor gates of steel so strong, but time itself still decays them. Oh, fearful meditation. Um, so these thoughts, they're fearful to me, and oh no, where, slack, shall time's best jewel from time's chest lie hid? So shall this, so time's best jewel is beauty. Interest. Oh, I like that. I kind of want to highlight that if I can. Time's best. Er, come here. That's actually a really poignant, po potentially. <laughs> That's what I mean. Way of putting it. Time's best jewel from time's chest lie hid. Because, again, beauty often associated with youth, but then time. So it's the jewel of time. Youth and beauty are the jewel of time, which eventually time retakes. So shall time's best jewel from time's chest lie hidden? So should beauty be hidden away, taken away from time itself? Or what strong hand can hold his swift foot back? What, what can go against it? Who his spoil of beauty can forbid? Who can forbid him spoiling that beauty? None, nothing, unless this miracle have might, has the strength, that in black ink, in my verse, my love may still shine bright. My love will live on. The beauty of my love will live on. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I really liked that. There were there were a couple of really good ones in there. I, I do. I love all of them. But there were those specific ones were very much interesting and very... Um, mental picture inducing which is not at all how I would like to say it but I can't think of how I would like to say it right now but it, yeah it's, it's what I mean so that was 65 on to 66 yeah we got time tired with all these for restful death I cry as to behold desert a beggar born and needy nothing trimmed in jollity, and purest faith unhappily forsworn, and gilded honor shamefully misplaced, and made in virtue rudely strumpeted, and right perfection wrongfully disgraced, and strength by limping, limping sway disabled. Ah. Oops. Ah, shoot. Oh, no. And art made tongue-tied by authority, and folly, doctor-like, controlling skill, and simple truth miscalled simplicity, and captive good attending captain ill. Tired with all these, from these would I be gone, save that to die I leave my love alone. Oh, okay, so basically going on about how horrible, horrible my life is as the author. I'm tired with all of these, and I cry for a restful death. As to behold desert, as to behold desert, a beggar born. Behold desert, a beggar born. And needy, nothing trimmed in jollity. So again, it's one of those things where it's like the mental picture is kind of there. It's just not the translation into modern English isn't quite there for me. So as to behold, de well, that's when we check trusty, dusty book. Ugh. So we are on 60. Six. 76. <gasps> Was I incorrect? <gasps> were we on 59? We were on 59. It wasn't the haha -ha number. 
It was the haha -ha number. We're on. S Hang on. 66. 70. Yeah, because. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm not used to Roman numerals. So this is 10. And this is. 16. Yeah. So 66. So I was incorrect? So that was 64. <gasps> that was 64. My bad. We haven't hit haha -ha number yet. 66. All right. Tired with all these for Restful Death I Cry. As to behold. Um, where are we? As such as. Okay. A desert. A deserving person. To behold desert. A beggar born. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> I got it all mixed up. I think I was just a little too excited to, yeah, get to the other one. And yeah, my bad. I apologize for that. Um, yes. So as to behold desert, a beggar born. So as such as desert, a deserving person. To behold a deserving person. Oh, a beggar born. Okay. So for restful death, I cry such as. To behold a deserving person as a beggar born. So someone who does deserve more was still born in a beggarly position. And needy, nothing trimmed in jollity. So very needy and nothing is trimmed in any form of jollity. And I need to make sense that it's not. I'm not thinking that it's jollity. A worthless nobody adorned with finery. Oh, okay. A needy nothing. Oh, so nothing as in... A person, a n nothing as a person, a needy nothing trimmed in jollity. Oh, okay. I'll just keep trusty dusty book here. And purest faith unhappily forsworn. Okay, so it's not necessarily all these horrible things in my life. It's seeing all of these things within the world. So, oh, okay, yes, yes, yes. So I'm tired of all these things within the world, these injustices within the world, such as seeing someone who is deserving born in a beggarly position seeing um somebody who doesn't deserve it trimmed out in things that they shouldn't be seeing um pure or faith unhappily forsworn gilded honor shamefully misplaced maiden virtue rudely strumpeted right perfection wrongfully disgraced so all of these things all these good things well the needy nothing was different all these good things um tainted and strength by lip by limping sway disabled by limping sway disabled and art made tongue-tied by authority so yeah and folly doctor-like controlling skill and simple truth miscalled simplicity Oh, I like that one. Simple truth miscalled simplicity. Because just because something appears simple does not mean it is... Just because something is easily stated does not make it a... Uh, doesn't mean it has less weight. And captive good attend attending cap captain ill Ooh, that's an interesting uh con contrast so yes so all of these things all of these good things tainted i'm tired with them all from these would i be gone save that save that to die i would leave my love alone so it is for you my love that i live <laughs> that i continue to live and that i am not um so unhappy in staying alive. I live for you, my love. So yeah, that one was that that was an interesting one where it was the uh, this to the that and the this to the that and the this to that and this to that. So it was a little bit different. It was cool. It was nice. So yeah, so sixty-seven. <laughs> ah. Wherefore, with infection should he live, and with his presence, grace and piety, 
that sin by him advantage should achieve and lace itself with his society. Why should false painting imitate his cheek and steal dead seeing of his living hue? Why should poor beauty indirectly seek roses of shadow since his rose is true? Why should he live now nature bankrupt is beggared of blood to blush through lively veins? For she hath no exchequer now but his and proud of many lives upon his gain. O oh, him she stores to show what wealth she had in days long since before these last so bad. Okay, so I need to check on Exchequer to make sure I actually pronounced it correctly. I'm sure in um, in French it is probably a little bit different. Exchequer. 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 A royal or national treasury. So yes, to do with money. I'll stop there actually. Okay. Ah, why with infection should he live? With disease should he live? Why with disease should he live? And with his presence, grace and piety, that sin by him advantage should achieve and lace itself with his society. So we'll come back to that a little bit. Why should false painting imitate his cheek? and steal dead seeing of his living hue. Okay. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm thinking potentially that it's talking about a couple and why, and I'm thinking that the infection and all of the bad things are the him she stores to show what wealth she had. I could be absolutely wrong with this one. Wherefore, with infection, should he live, and with his presence, grace, and piety, that sin by him advantage should achieve, and lace itself with his society. We're going to check trusty dusty book, just so I'm not going really off on this one. Because it at first it almost seemed like it was the um, the subject of the first lines was the negative subject threat 67 therefore why with infection in a corrupt world where why in a corrupt world should he live okay yeah sure uh grace adorn advantage benefit lace adorn yes yes sin by him sin by him advantage should achieve all right this isn't really giving me much so we're just gonna go for it why with disease corruption should he live and with his presence grace and piety that sin by him advantage should achieve that advantage should be achieved through sin that sin by him advantage that sin by him advantage should achieve. some of these ugh, some of them come really easily and others don't and lace itself, adorn itself with his society. So that's where it, yeah, so why should he live with all these horrible things that, um, like, yeah, ad adorn itself with his society? Why should false painting imitate his cheek? So false uh, imitation, oh, well, that's there, his, his, look his beauty and steal dead seeing of his living hue and steal again it's imitating him and stealing dead in that imitation the imitation is impure is false is tainted seeing of his living hue why should poor beauty indirectly seek roses of shadow since his rose is true so poor beauty is seeking Okay, is it saying why should he live so highly in society if he is corrupted and false? See, that's what I was thinking too, right away. But then towards the end. Oh, actually, we're going to hold on to that because now I'm. So why should he live now nature bankrupt is? So the she at the end is nature. But then it says his rose is true. Yes. 
So that's why I'm that's that's why I kind of went the other way. So so yeah, because I was thinking that the she at the end is taking from him. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm I might have it. So yes, yes. Why should he? Okay, hang on. Why should poor beauty? So okay, so I think this is fleshing out um, the um, another theme that has been in past ones, where, but just like in a full poem, that nature basically nature itself, or just in general, um, the subject is more beautiful, is better, is more worthy than literally anything, and then getting into it just in these next lines roses of shadow since his rose is true um why should he live now nature nature is bankrupt beggared of blood to blush through his lively veins so he has taken all beauty from nature it's blushing in his veins y okay y yes so then yeah so she has no um no no cash, no bank, no um, worth except in him. Proud of many, lives upon his... So nature is... She has so many, but only lives upon him. Him she stores to show what wealth she had in days long since before these last so bad. So yes, yeah, so she used to have so much wealth until it all was put into him his worth his beauty his yes I think I think that that from from past um, from past analyses and past poems I think that that's what it is so basically yeah just that um, and then, and then, yeah. So why should he? Why should he live in this world that is not worthy of him? I guess. And then, yeah. So nature bringing. So he may be corrupt. Ooh, and false. But she sees. Oh no. But she sees him as true. Ooh, interesting. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> there have been themes like that too. So absolutely. Yeah, I love that. And that's and that is. That's what I love about these. That makes sense to what you said. Yeah, okay. And and that's the thing is one thing that I really like about this stuff is that there are there there is one way that the author meant it, but if you can also come to other conclusions and start fleshing out other ideas, is it necessarily wrong? Like maybe it doesn't it wasn't intended, but because that also um, inspired that other idea, it's still good. Yeah, <laughs> kind of, <laughs> if that makes sense. So yeah, so I love that. And yeah, just like the different um, ways that it can be taken. So yeah, so thank you for that. That was good, that was nice. Ah, all right, so that was, 67 took a while but but yeah yeah I, I think we got it so number 68 thus is his cheek the map of days outworn when beauty lived and died as flowers do now before these bastard signs of fair were born or durst inhabit on a living brow before the golden tresses of the dead the right of sepulchres were shorn away to live a second life on second on second head ere beauty's dead fleece made another gay in him whose holy antique hours are seen, without all ornament itself and true, making no summer of another's green, robbing no old to dress his beauty new, and him as for as for a map doth nature store, to show false art what beauty was of yore. Okay, thus is his cheek the map of days outworn, he's wrinkled, he is aged, when beauty lived and died as flowers do now. Um before these bastard signs of fair were born. Uh, okay, thus is his cheek, the map of days outworn, when beauty lived and died as flowers do now. 
before these bastard signs of fair were born or durst inhabit on a living brow. Uh, it is translated from different perspectives because we all have different points of view in life. Yes, basic, begin, optimistic, and pessimistic. Yes, that's absolutely true. I, I was reading, I think it was Schopenhauer, and that was one of the things. And it is, it's like if you tell somebody to draw, to draw a house, you're going to have everybody's going to have a different version of a house. Um, mine's going to be horrible. I don't draw very well, but like, that's beside the point. So yeah, so absolutely. And that's, that's why too, again, going just, just, just a smidgen back to the, just a smidgen back to the rant, um, is just because all of the pieces are already in play, have already been, um, everything has already been done in taking your myriad experiences and your way of looking at things that's what makes it different and again just not following what everybody else is doing and sticking with trends exactly but some big some small some detail and some plain yes yes absolutely so yeah and and that's something too where i mean it's not it's not a um uh, uh what's the word absolute truth or an absolutely truthful representation or it, it is it's like an insight into mentality so like just because somebody might draw something very simple it doesn't mean that they're simple minded it could just mean that they don't like you know what a house is I'm going to draw a house and that represents a house so it, and then like you go from that where it is. It could mean different things, even from. <laughs> Sorry, um, but yeah. So like, like, so saying draw house and everybody draws something different, and then even looking at all those different representations, you could have different understandings of why they drew that, or each one could then um, inspire something else in like somebody else so uh, i guess just as like a potential specific uh example it could be like if you see somebody else drawing a house and you're like oh i want to put like pillars on it i forgot windows and then i'm gonna add windows to my drawing so like yeah that communication and um and then once once <laughs> once sorry i'm getting too into this uh, but as soon as you start drawing your windows you might draw them differently and to like fit your house so yeah <laughs> they view their house differently than maybe their family or their job some house is a place to stay whereas another it may be home that's true too yeah and getting into oh, yes i love that i didn't i didn't i didn't even think about that so thank you for that oh i love that yeah that was nice i like that <laughs> And to be honest, I'm not actually sure where where we were now, but yeah, yeah, it it is. And and well, yeah. So going into that again, like that, sure, take inspiration from other things, from other people. No, 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 no. You're fine. It's me. It's just I. I love going off about these things, and then I just automatically, yeah. It's no. Don't worry about it. You don't have to be sorry. Absolutely not. Um. But, yeah, I do. I go off on a, about a lot of stuff. So it's, it's not, it's not your fault, it's me. Um, but, yeah, so, again, sure, take inspiration from other people, from other things, but also make sure you're also utilizing those experiences that you have in order to then inform somebody else, probably. So, yeah if that makes sense and <laughs> it, it it's it's one of those topics that i really enjoy and it, it might it might not um come out very coherently so i ap i apologize for that uh so were we we were starting to analyze this one weren't we <laughs> but no i did i absolutely i i i don't just like analyzing um the versus themselves i do like going into those other things because 
It is. It's not just about the verses. It is about going into those, how it relates to everything else and why these things have lasted so long is because they are so relatable and they do speak truth even though in certain ways they are very specific maybe like a lot of them are just like about love and stuff it doesn't necessarily need to be about um romantic love it can be about platonic love or just kind of love in general familial love and yeah so just all of those again inspirations that could come off of it even if it's not like we did in the last one where maybe it didn't necessarily go with what the intent of the poem was it still can shoot off into other truths that just because it doesn't it wasn't intended in this poem it doesn't mean that it's still not true yeah <laughs> sorry um so yes as you can see i like to talk about this stuff so yes yeah all right yes but yes thank you thank you for that i i did appreciate that that stuff so thank you thus is his cheek yes we did read this one thus is his cheek the map of days outworn so yes it is outworn upon his face on his cheek um his map of days because aged when beauty lived we were going over this yes okay when beauty lived and died as flowers do now before these bastard signs of fair were born see uh, okay wait hang on yes okay I, I, I was trying to make make the connection again so um, or durst inhabit on a living brow before these okay I need to make sure that I'm <clears throat> understanding this bit correctly it's around 68 yep 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 illegitimate marks of beauty okay before these illegitimate marks of beauty were born or durst inhabit on a living brow oh oh okay so this one is saying that the bastard signs of fair are cosmetics so basically, um, uh, these, yeah, illegitimate, because it's not, it's not that natural beauty, it is an attempt toward beauty, but is unnatural, is, um, false. Um, okay, so thus his, thus is his cheek, the map of days at Warren, he is aged, when beauty, oh, okay, so back when beauty lived and died, and there weren't those um, ways of uh, retaining youth by false means or durst inhabit on a living brow. Before the golden tresses of the dead, the right of sepulchres were shorn away to live a second life on second head. So I... Before the golden tresses of the dead, the right of sepulchres were shorn away. Before all those things were taken away by that um, that ability to change oneself to live a second life on second head before beauty's dead fleece made another happy before beauty's dead fleece made another in him those holy antique hours are seen so he, you can see the hours the age and the hours in him, and they are holy, they are to be treasured. Without all ornament, itself and true, there's no, um, yeah, ornament, no adorning, no painting of oneself, it is there, it's itself, it is true. Making no summer of another's green, robbing, okay, making no, so basically painting on a new face robbing no old to dress his beauty anew and him as for a map doth nature store him as for a map doth nature store so nature stores him as a map to show false art what beauty was of yore so that 
so I think this one is going into that whole yeah so the false beauty and that false idea of beauty where beauty is just considered youth whereas beauty is also that age which goes back to the narcissism poem um which is why am i so why do i think myself so worthy and above everyone else even though i look my age and i have all of that um I, I have all of those marks. It's because of the days that I lived. So getting into that, talking about how painting on a new face, it's not yours. Um, and it's, again, a bastardization of beauty itself, which is not simply youth, is not simply outward beauty, but also the life that was lived. I think. <laughs> that one was another one of those. Um... Yeah, a little a little bit strange ones. But I think we got there. I think. So, and now I can say it is the haha -ha number. <laughs> I think I'll make sure. Yes. It is haha -ha number time. <laughs> so now we shall see. All right. Those parts of thee that the world's eye doth view want nothing that the thought of heart can mend. All tongues, the voice of souls give thee that do uttering bare truth even so as foes commend thine outward thus with outward thine outward thus with outward praise is crowned but those same tongues that give thee so thine own in other accents do this praise confound by seeing farther than the eye hath shown they look into the beauty of thy mind and that in guess they measure by thy deeds then churls their thoughts although their eyes were kind to thy fair flower add the rank smell of weeds but why thy odor matcheth not thy show, the solve is this, that thou dost common grow. Interesting. Okay, so those parts of thee that the world's eye doth view, so your outwardness, your outward look. Oh, example, a king having his portrait painted is in a stronger version past rather than the current frail figure at life's end. Ooh, ooh, oh. Are you you're talking about this last one? Oh, interesting. Okay. So, thus in his cheek, map of days thou worn, before this bastard song to fair were born, O durst inhabit on a living brow before the world cast the dead, shorn away, live a second life, second head, ere beauty's dead fleece made another gay. In him those holy empty thou hast seen, thou the ornament of soft truth. Oh Yeah. I love that. I didn't even think about that. Oh, thank you for that. Uh, oh, I do. Oh, I do. I, I do. I really like that. Yeah, and that gives it a lot more of a... A broader perspective, too. Where it's not just... Yeah. Uh, yeah. The just painting oneself, but also, like, the painting. Oh. I like that. I like that a lot. Thank you. Excellent. All right. And and maybe um yes. So I think this this those parts of thee that the world's eye doth view. So yes, the outward appearance want nothing that the thought of heart can mend. So the outward appearance wants nothing that um the heart looking on that if the heart was generous would mend whatever faults the outward appearance would hold. So all tongues, the voice of souls, give thee that do. So everybody says it, everybody uh, says it that way, that it's your look on you and say you're good, you're beautiful. Uttering bare truth, even so as foes commend. So even the foes do the same thing. Thine outward, thus with out for outward praise is crowned. So your outwardness is crowned and praised. But those same tongues that praise your outward appearance give thee so thine own. In other accents, um, confound that praise and uh, con con 
I'm going to say contrast, but that's not the right con, con that I'm trying to think of. But by seeing farther than the eye hath shown. <sighs> okay. Uh, it almost... Uh, we're we're going to keep going because I can see this going two ways. By look... Or, sorry. By seeing... So yeah, so they confound that outward praise by seeing farther than the eye hath shown. So again, they look into the beauty of the mind. And that, in guess, they measure by thy deeds. So they guess what your mind is, the beauty of your mind, by what your deeds are. Then churls, so um, shaming and scolding them, their thoughts, though their eyes were kind, their thoughts uh, add the rank smell of weeds to your fair flower. But why thy odor matches, matcheth not thy show, so why your apparent odor, your flower, your scent, doesn't match, your odor doesn't match your flower, um, the solve is this, that thou dost come and grow. So this one is not about love, I don't think, and basically it almost it seems to be un see it's either the author saying that your outward appearance is common or un this could go multiple different ways so either your outward appearance is common enough, like you're you're good looking enough that it's common, or your personality is common enough, or common being just because you are physically appealing, your status in life being a common person, like one of the common folk taints that appeal maybe we're gonna check trusty dusty book and see if they have any anything helpful so, was there soil at all in this one solve is this uh bu bu the soil um okay so my book says this is different so instead of the solve is this the soil is this that thou dost come and grow well that's different but yeah so so commonplace and vulgar yeah so Parts of thee that the world's eye doth view can be mended by being generous of heart. And the you are praised for that outward appearance, but I do, I do think that it is chiding kind of. Okay, so it's chiding both. It's chiding both the subject as well as the other people making uh, judgments. So, your outward appearance is praised, but the people who praise your outward... So, kind of like the um, Emperor's New Clothes, a little bit, by praising the outward and not seeing... So then the churls, their thoughts, although their eyes were kind, so they're uh, indulging that outward appearance and not actually saying anything, like, you know, y your personality is kind of not, not okay. <laughs> Or the way that you are. So letting somebody get away with a bad personality because they are attractive. Potentially. So yeah, so basically chiding both sorts of people. The people who, because they're attractive, let themselves have horrible personalities. And the people who um, indulge them and praise them because they are attractive. And don't, and in secret only, not to their face, uh, talk about how horrible they are as a person. And don't help them grow at all. 
Oh, that thou dost come and quell. Potentially, kind of, maybe. I hope. So number 70, and we'll see. Oh, wow. Um, we can do one more, maybe. I hope. I hope. I concur. Oh, good. Oh, good. I hope so. Great. I will be much better. Uh, yes. I am glad. So I will be I will be solid in that one then. So we're, we'll do one more. Hopefully it's a nice one, and then I'll I'll probably have to uh, head out. So number seventy, that thou art blamed shall not be thy defect. But shall not. But oh my gosh, I'm gonna start over. Number seventy, that thou art blamed shall not be thy defect. For slander's mark was ever yet the fair. The ornament of beauty is suspect, a crow that flies in heaven's sweetest air. So thou be good, slander doth but approve thy worth the greater, being wooed of time. For canker vice the sweetest buds doth love, and thou presentst a pure unstained prime. Thou hast passed by the ambush of young days, either not assailed or victor being charged. Yet this thy praise cannot be so thy praise, to tie up envy ever more enlarged. If some suspect of ill masked not thy show, then thou alone kingdoms of hearts shouldst owe. All right. So we'll see where this goes. That thou art blamed shall not be thy defect. So though you are blamed, that sh will not be your, def your defect. That's not your problem. For slander's mark was ever yet the fair. So that could be one of those. Um, okay, yeah, so... You're blamed, it's not your problem. Slander's mark demonstrates that you are fair because the ornament of beauty is suspect. When um, that, that envy of other people will, when people are successful, attractive, any good thing, there's always going to be people who will talk bad about that because they are envious of it, I think. A crow that flies in heaven's sweetest air, so thou be good, slander doth but approve. So, yes, a crow that flies in heaven's sweetest A crow. The, or the ornament of beauty is suspect. A crow that flies in heaven's sweetest air. To be honest, I'm not quite sure how that kind of goes. I like crows, though, so I think that it's kind of, like, kind of talking bad about crows a little bit but so like the ornament of beauty is suspect like a crow that flies in heaven's sweetest air like heaven's sweetest air should not be tainted by the crow but I like crows uh, so I think that might be what that one is so thou you be good slander if you get slandered it just approves thy worth the greater being wooed of time because so well, so first that part, so slander just approves and shows your greater worth because people are taking the time to um, try and knock knock you down from whatever pedestal they think you're on. Um, so thou be good, slander doth but approve thy worth the greater, being wooed of time. Okay, so be good because eventually um, time will um, consume you or... You're being wooed of time, if, if that makes sense. Eventually, time takes over. For canker vice, the sweetest buds doth love. So canker buds was, or canker blooms were the closed rose. Vice, or, that's probably different. For canker vice, the sweetest buds doth love. So sweetest buds love vice. And thou, pres Oh, oh, okay, so yeah, so going again to that, the slander um, uh, brings, uh, what's the word, brings attention to, and, uh, yeah, brings attention to that which they actually admire, but again, are envious of. So the, for canker vice, hang on, for canker vice, yes, so that vice, whatever is um, a vice, loves the sweetest buds that makes sense. And thou, you present a pure unstained prime. You are, you're pure, you're unstained, and you're prime, so you are going to 
be loved and slandered by the worst, obviously. Thou hast passed by the ambush of young days, so you've passed beyond the young days, um, either not assailed, not um, gone after, or victor, or you were victorious over um, any charges. Yet this, thy praise, cannot be so thy praise. This, this thy praise cannot be so thy praise. To tie up envy ever more enlarge. Ooh, okay. So this praise of you cannot exactly be praise of you, your own praise, because tying up that envy, which comes after you, just becomes m even greater, potentially. If some suspect of ill masked not thy show, then thou alone kingdoms of hearts shouldst owe. If some suspect of ill masked, some suspect of ill masked not thy show. Some, oh, slander also defects people's thoughts and ideas away from the slander of false. True. Ooh, absolutely. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Now I'm trying to <laughs> go back through and make sure I didn't miss anything specifically for that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. That's, yes, that's excellent. I love it. Um, so yes, if some, <laughs> if some suspect of ill masked not thy show, then thou alone kingdom. Oh, um, so it's almost seeming like if some suspect of ill mask not thy show. So if something had not masked your worth, your outward worth, you alone would be owed kingdoms of hearts. So so it's so it's almost like it seems like it's kind of comforting someone who has passed beyond those times who dealt with all that stuff but in that slander okay so like thou hast pat okay hang on that thou art blamed shall not be thy defect slander's mark was ever yet the fair ornament of beauty suspect court of life though thou be good slander doth but approve thy worth the greater being lewd of time for canker vice sweetest bud of that love, and thou presents a pure unstained prime. Thou ha thou hast passed by the ambush of young days, either not assailed or victor being charged. Yet this praise cannot be your own to tie up envy evermore enlarged. If some suspect of ill masked not thy show. So it does. It makes it seem like somebody or something, that suspect of ill masked what that that out, outward worth maybe <laughs> not, maybe not necessarily outward but something some that suspect of ill masked what they had to show and because of that that is why they passed through the ambush of young days and that is why it cannot be considered their own praise because if they had not done that then you if you hadn't been masked over then you alone then thou alone kingdom oh 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 hang on then thou alone kingdoms of hearts shouldst oh so now it's seeming like it's a good thing you got through the ambush of your young days not assailed or you were the victor over it it can't be just your praise and to tie up the envy it's ever more enlarged if some suspect of ill hadn't masked you, you would be beholden and owing so many hearts, if that makes sense. So, it does. It almost seems like it's... Not trying to comfort, but explaining the experience like why this person experienced what they did to them and this is why because people were 
talking trash about you because you were so good. And because of that, then you weren't as um, outwardly pursued as you would have been. But that's a good thing because otherwise you would have had all these broken hearts in tow. Potentially. Because, yeah, so to tie up envy, it becomes ever more. So, because, and then if, if adding rejection to, um, so they're already getting slandered. So if you added rejection, or just in general, if you added rejection to that, that would enlarge further that envy. Because with that rejection, it's something that you can't have. And then that just kind of continues, continues, continues. Kind of. <laughs> I'll see if there's potentially anything I missed in trusted Dusty book. But, uh, false and use something to hold against you. Target. Uh huh. Uh huh. I do. I, I think I think that I think that's pretty much people viewed you differently and you also became closed off because of that things in life went differently. Right. So I guess I would ask if you had a, a um, thought of which way it is like it was it went good or not or maybe it doesn't matter, I guess whether it's good or not, negative or positive, whether it, whether how people treated that person or yeah, whether, whether people treated that person and how it changed how they lived their life, whether or not that was a good thing or not. But yeah, became closed off, passed by the ambush of young days. Right, right. Yeah. Our blame shall not be thy defect. Slander is not delivered with prayer that one may be the to the court of thy name. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For thou be good, slander thou shalt prove. In need of time for candor, but it's uh huh, uh huh, thou present, uh huh, thou dost death. Yeah. Yeah, yep, I do. I like that. Oh, it could not matter, as in the end, maybe this person lived a great life. Right, but it could have been better, or it could have been worse. And I kind of like it like that. I kind of I, I kind of like it like that, where it, it does. It kind of just leaves it up to, well, and it also could potentially bring it to, like, sure, it, it, it could have been better, it could have been worse. But that's still why you shouldn't let other people's opinion of you direct how you live your life. But since they already did, it kind of gives them a little bit of a, well, I mean, like it could have been, it, it, it could have been better if you hadn't done that, but also it could have been worse. Like you could have, like you're already here, so <laughs> why, um... Uh, oh, what's the word? Why make you feel worse for having done that when you're our, you, you can't do anything about it now? But as a general to the reader sort of a thing, more of that, like just live your life, you do you, and just don't worry about what other people, um, how other people treat you and what they think about you. Things happen for a reason, yes, but it does show how others view you can alter your life, even if you are comfortable with yourself. That's absolutely true, too. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I do. I think that that sums it up very, very well. Ugh. That was great. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. I do. I think that that that's 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 basically that's it right there. Oh, 
yes, I am. I'm I'm gonna have to go. That was that was really excellent. I really appreciated your um thoughts and your insights because I did. There was a lot of things that I didn't even think of, and yeah, it was it was very inspiring and more um idea growing and obviously now again I'm brain dead at the end of this so yeah but um yeah so that was Shakespeare I hope you enjoyed um and yeah any 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 final thoughts um but yeah, and that, that is, that's, and I guess also going into that too, also describing to other people, not just don't worry about what other people think of you, but also stop worrying about other people and stop talking about other people because you have that power. Um, as, as strong as they might be, everybody gets worn down. So to the people who get... Um, flack from people and are slandered by people um try not to let it bother you as much as possible and to the people who slander and talk about other people don't do that so it's both yeah <sighs> anyway yes so that was shakespeare's sonnets um uh yeah so that the next time um the reading will be in two weeks and it will be october so it will be spooky things uh last year didn't go the way that i hoped because the stories that i found didn't end up being as good but i think i found some more of my style which yeah i really like twisty stuff and stuff that really make like yeah psychological stuff so i think that i got those so if you're interested in that that'll be in a couple of weeks come october other than that, next week will be flying on Tuesday as usual, as well as, I don't know, whenever else I can, if I get in like Thursday or Friday, or not Thursday or Sunday would be the days that I would, if I could. So yeah, other than that, I did. I had a lot of fun. I always need, need fiction in my life. It's what I, uh, it's, it's what I came from. And I do, I'm really enjoying the flying and stuff, but it is a lot more technical than I'm used to. So I always need a little bit of poetry and um, yeah, fiction. So yeah, so that was fun. And I really enjoyed analyzing that and going over that and hearing your thoughts and insights. And I hope you enjoyed it too. And I hope to see you again soon. Um, and I'll make sure I have all of my stuff proper. <laughs> I, I do, I really need a stream checklist, but I always keep forgetting about it. But yes. So have a great whatever it's going to be for you. Thanks for coming in. Uh, it was great to chat. And yeah. So yeah, I think I think that's about it. If I missed anything, I'm sorry. But other than that, yeah, thanks again. And 